Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, inshallah, I'd like to review the general concepts of rational functions and just to add a little bit about the discuss uh, to our previous discussion of graphing rational functions. Okay, so if you recall, the parent rational function was this one. Uh, f of x is equal to 1 over x. So that is our parent rational function. It kind of looked like this. It had two arms, going like this. And you know, the parent rational function had a two asymptotes, right? So in this case, the asymptotes were you know, the x and the y axes. So the x axis was one asymptote, and the y axis was the second asymptote. And the meaning of the asymptotes, if you recall, is very important to us. In these, in these functions, the meaning of the asymptotes, we define that as our pseudovertex. Okay? That is, that's the pseudovertex being the vx and the vy. So the, for the rational functions, the pseudovertex, uh, the concept that we have extrapolated from our previous adventures, is the meeting of the two uh, of the asymptotes over here for these basic uh, rational functions. Now, on this, we elaborated, and, then, and so we said, well, from here, the general basic rational function was this. f of x is equal to a over uh, x minus vx plus vy right so that's the general uh, as a um, general rational function now this was a re this reminded us of the the pattern that we've been following was all the way starting from chapter one the quadratic functions right and the vertex form of the quadratic function was this x minus vx square plus vy so from there, and then we had other functions such as the radical functions f of x is equals a times the quantity of x, uh, the, the ra uh, square root of x minus vx plus vy. And in the same pattern, we had this, where in, now the defining feature of the rational function, which is, of course, the denominator here, the defining function of the rational function would be the denominator here over here. So instead of being over here squared, which is the case over here, the rational function, of course, is the, uh, the x, the variable here, is the denominator. So this was our basic general rational function. In this case, the, vertice, the vertex, the vx and the vy, or the pseudo-vertex, the pv right here, is the intersection of the uh, uh, horizontal and the vertical asymptote. So if you had a function such as this, f of x is equal to 3 over x minus 2 plus 4. In this case, the pseudo-vertex, okay, the pseudo-vertex, the PV, you can call it, is going to be equal to 2 and 4. It's minus 2. See, it's minus over here. So it's not minus 2, it's 2 and 4. That's the pseudo-vertex. And that would be the intersection of the, uh, the two asymptotes. If we were to graph this, okay, which I'm going to do over here, See? Here it is. So in this program, you can actually plot individual points, which I can do 2, comma, 4. OK? So that's the pseudo-vertex, OK? And so that is going to be the pseudo-vertex. It's like over here, see? So I've graphed these two lines, this, the, the, the intersection of these two, uh, two, two, these two lines, which are the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes, would be the pseudo-vertex for this function, right? So now, of, of course, the, um, the horizontal and the vertical axes are not part of the function. They're just to assist us in graphing this function. So in this case, the 2 and 4, if we were to graph this, if this was 1 and this is 2, and this is one, two, three, four, so over here like this. 
that would be the new intersection of the x the the uh, the new intersection so it's the new x and y axis or the uh, the where the two uh, asymptotes would meet so we we're reasonably familiar with these basic rational functions okay now this is a review so I'm kind of taking you through the uh, to what we did in this chapter, okay? More advanced, and we said, well, what about something like this? Now, g of x is equal to something like this: two x minus four or x minus three. Now this does not look like, now this does not look like this, right? This this does not look like the form like, like this. G of x is equal to a over x minus vx plus vy, right? Clearly this does not look like this, right? But anytime you have like this type of a function, where you basically you have a linear function on top and a linear function on the bottom. It is y equals mx plus b on the top and mx plus b on the on the bottom, like this. This is also a rational function, right? This is also, of course, a rational function. Now, you can we have learned how to graph more advanced rational functions, but one way of graphing this is by doing long division of this thing. Long division is nobody's favorite thing to do, but if you do this over here, you you write write two x minus four divided by x minus three. You see two goes in there over here, and then two x minus six, and then you subtract the two, and you get a remainder of positive two. So you can rewrite this as when you divide this by this, you get two, which is over here, plus the remainder is two over x minus three, right? So then you can rewrite this. So you can say, well, this is 2 over x minus 3, like over here, plus this 2, plus 2. And now you can see that's in, that pretty much looks like this form over here, where the pseudo-vertex is going to be 3 and 2, all right? So now this was the second, uh, um, uh, so this was the second example of a rational function that we completed. So this was a second example of a rational function that we completed. In other words, you have to kind of recognize that when you see something like this, it's actually uh, a rational function, and you can convert this into uh, in this form, uh, the pseudo-vertex form, by doing long division. Okay, so these are the two uh, basic types of rational functions. And we, we have to uh, recognize this form, of course. This is the most fundamental form. And that's derived from the parent function over here, where you can uh, um, uh, translate the function into different parts of the Cartesian plane. So, and this is uh, very reminiscent of the, of the, in the pattern of all the of previous functions that we have uh, studied, including the quadratic function, the rational function, since it's in this pattern. And this uh, pattern is a slight variation of this, and we can easily uh, change the two actually into a form. You can do long division here to get this into the different form. Briefly, I'm going to, to uh, review the um, more complex, how to graph more complex form of rational functions. So the general form of the rational function can be written as this. So uh, some rational function, the f of x, you can write it as a, um, a p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are both polynomials uh, functions. So here, a uh, rational function is basically composed of two polynomial functions. And we can write this, as you recall, and such as this, p a m x to the m plus a, -M a sub m minus 1 to x to the m minus 1 to dot 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 <coughs> all the way up to a sub 1 and uh, x to the power 1 and a sub 0. So that's the polynomial that's on the numerator where a m represents of course the leading coefficient 
and m represents the degree of the numerator polynomial, the degree of this polynomial. So that's the degree of this polynomial. And in the denominator, you have another polynomial. You can't use a because, you know, if you use a over n, then n could be like this or some other number. So you have to use different, uh, 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 different uh, variable for the coefficients. So here we, we use bn, b sub n, x to the n, plus b sub n minus 1 to x to the n minus 1, like this, all the way up to b sub 1, x to the first n, b sub 0. Now you understand b sub n just uh, is used conveniently to represent the, uh, the coefficient that belongs to the, the x term with the nth exponent. And b sub n minus 1 is the coefficient that goes with or belongs to the term that has the exponent x minus 1. So that's the rationale behind the, 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 um, the notation. So this is a general polynomial uh, function composed, uh, general rational function composed of two polynomials like this. In graphing this, we have to do two, uh, uh, two things. When you graph this, it's like step one and step two. And it's easy peasy. Now, step one is finding all the vertical asymptotes. Okay, step one is finding all the vertical asymptotes, if there are any, right? And step two is finding all the horizontal asymptotes. If there are any, in other words, a, a rational function does not does not necessarily have to have a vertical asymptote or a, a horizontal asymptote per se. So, how do you find the vertical asymptotes? Well, vertical asymptotes is related to the denominator. Anything that makes the denominator zero or the zeros of the denominator are the vertical asymptotes. So, the zeros of the denominator are uh, the vertical asymptote, the denominator. So vertical asymptotes are the zeros of the denominator. And horizontal asymptotes, well, this is, this is a scenario uh, more trickier, right? So here we compare, to find the horizontal asymptotes, you have to compare the degree of the numerator and the degree of the, of the denominator. Okay, so you have to compare the degree of the numerator and degree of the denominator to find the horizontal asymptotes. When you compare the, two, the, the degrees, there are three possibilities. m is greater than n, or m equals to n, m equals to n, or m is less than n. Okay, these are the three possibilities, right? m is greater than n, m equals to n, or m is less than n. If m is greater than n, Okay, this means that there are no horizontal asymptotes. Now, today we're going to elaborate on this because some of you were not there the other day when we talked about this, and it's important enough. So, if m is greater than n, then there are no horizontal asymptotes. So, a function can have vertical asymptotes, can have horizontal asymptotes, and it can also, as we will discover today, it can have slanted asymptotes. Okay, or slant asymptotes, or oblique asymptotes. So this does not mean that there are no slant or oblique. Same, see, see the two synonyms are used here. The uh, asymptotes. So the, your function could have slanted or oblique asymptotes. We discover, but for here, simplistically, as in the beginning, if m is greater than n, there are no horizontal asymptotes. In case m equals to n then the horizontal asymptote is a line. All horizontal lines start with y equals something, right? y equals 5, for example, is a horizontal line that goes through the, uh, the, the 0, uh, 5. This point right here is 0, 5. So, uh, all horizontal lines have y equals something. So, now, if it is, uh, if m equals n, then the, uh, then the horizontal asymptote is simply the leading coefficients, am over bm. So you take the, uh, the leading coefficients, and uh, in case they're, they're equal, and uh, that will be the horizontal 
asymptote okay in case m is less than n then the horizontal asymptote is simply the line y equals zero which is the x-axis okay in case the in case m is less than n and this is a scenario of the parent function well, uh, f of s is equal to one over x in this case uh, in this case numerator m uh, is actually uh, uh, zero right and and n is one so so this is the scenario um, of the parent function so this is very important so this this basic knowledge you have to understand in case m is greater than n there's no horizontal asymptote that doesn't mean that there are no other oblique or slant asymptotes okay if m equals n then the um, y equals a m over b n these are just leading coefficient this is the case of the leading coefficient scenario and when m is less than n then the um, uh, y equals zero is the um, 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 scenario is, is a horizontal asset. Okay, so now I'd like to give you examples of each one of these. So here's an example of the first case where n is greater than n. So the, the degree of the numerator is 3 and the degree of the denominator is 2. In that case, if you, re if you recognize, the, uh, this is that scenario, so there's no horizontal asymptotes. So, as you can see, there's, there's no horizontal asymptotes over here. Now, interestingly, there, uh, this, there's, there is a, you can see a funky-looking graph over here. You can see it's going like this. You'll see in this case, if you can imagine, there's a line like this. This, this graph will actually have a oblique or slant asymptotes, kind of like that, and, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about in, in just a little bit. So, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Vertical asymptotes. So let's go about verticals. The vertical asymptotes are related to the denominator over here. See, and whatever makes the denominator zero. In this case, the not what what will make the denominator zero. So, what you set this equal to zero. This bottom equation, you set it equal to zero. Okay, so x squared minus four is equal to zero, and you solve for x. You know, you, you guys have sometimes forget how to do these simple things. So, subtract, or you add four to both sides, and you take the square root of both sides, and you get x is equal to plus or minus two. So, x is equal to plus or minus two. Those are the two uh, the horizontal uh, vertical asymptotes. So, I put this line over here, and then I'll put another one here. X is equal to negative two. So, let me magnify this. See. See, these are the two vertical asymptotes, right? So uh, here, the, here is a vertical asymptote. That's x. X is equal to two. So that's the other vertical asymptote. And uh, if, see right here, that's the vertical asymptotes. And this is two and a negative two. Those are the two vertical asymptotes. Okay. So those are the two lines that the graph will, will approach, but will not uh, cross. Okay. Now. So those are the two vertical asymptotes. So when we dis when we're talking about vertical asymptotes, we look at the denominator, and when we're talking about the horizontal asymptotes. We look at the degree of the numerator compared to the degree of the denominator. In this case, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, which means we are in the first scenario over here. There will be no horizontal asymptotes. This graph does not have any horizontal asymptotes. Okay. <coughs> As you can see, there's no horizontal. There's, the graph does not approach any horizontal line. Okay, and the in case m equals to zero, so I can we can easily do this one. So let's make this to be I don't know. Make make this a three. In case m equals to this, when the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then the the horizontal asymptote is in fact. After we have to like. Uh, uh, magnify this and magnify this is equal to the leading coefficients so the horizontal after so is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficient that's three over one at, at one x cubed right so here's the horizontal asymptote let's draw it out here if you can magnify this see the graph approaches this but never where well, he says over here it looks like almost the, but if you have to magnify it further you'll see it will never actually approach that so so this is the case when the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator and the uh, horizontal asymptote will be equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients as demonstrated here. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, that's easy peasy, you can just change this to a like a 2, see? 
then 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 the horizontal asymptote will be the same as the as a parent function in the parent see in the parent function y equals one over x the degree of the denominator is, uh, the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator so same scenario if you draw y equals zero uh, horizontal line which is the x-axis that will be the horizontal asymptote this is the third scenario over here this is a cute graph if you step back and it does one of these funky doodle things over here so um fascinating so um so those are the three scenarios where we, ha we have analyzed um asymptotes so when graphing rational functions as a review again when graphing rational function this is the parent function and then the next level up is this general basic function and after this we covered a function which was like this okay f of x is equal to uh, um, uh, ax plus b and mx uh, so let, me, let me put it this way y uh, mx plus b a line over a line so ax plus c another line like this okay that's the, and then you can do long division there or you can do you can graph that one using these these second principles over here and then we talked about general long uh, 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 functions uh, rational functions and how to graph these graphing them is a two-step process easy peasy step one find the vertical asymptotes and step two find the horizontal asymptotes there's one key topic that's slightly nuanced to this in, in in regards to the vertical asymptotes and i'll put a little star over here for fine print and so read the fine print over here what i'm writing over here okay and that's the secret over here i'm just kidding there's nothing over there but we're going to talk about this fine print there's one tricky scenario regarding the vertical asymptotes but in general the way you find vertical asymptotes you find the zeros whatever makes the denominator haram or zero those are your vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes are the three scenarios um, the degree of the numerator compared to the degree of the denominator okay okay now we're going to complete our discussion over here by talking about oblique or slant asymptotes some of you weren't there uh, for this discussion so that's why I thought we talk about it and it's kind of important because you got to know this stuff because one's kind of cool so you can have vertical and, and horizontal asymptotes again the way you find vertical asymptotes the way you graph uh, rational functions is first you find the vertical asymptotes and the way you find the vertical asymptotes is by finding the zeros of the denominator and the way you find horizontal asymptotes the way you find horizontal asymptotes is by comparing the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator and the three scenarios of course uh, are as, as m is greater than n m is equal to n m is less than n in this case we said there are no horizontal asymptotes in this case we said the horizontal asymptote is simply the ratio of the leading coefficients and in the third scenario m is less than n the horizontal asymptote is equal to y the line y equal to zero <clears throat> now in this scenario in this scenario where m is greater than n there's no horizontal asymptote however there is an oblique asymptote if there there can be an oblique asymptote if if m is greater than n by one degree in other words m is equal to n plus one in other words m is only one degree higher than the, the denominator if the numerator is one degree higher than the denominator if the numerator is one degree higher than the denominator then you will have an oblique and or slant asymptote so the, the so m is one degree greater than n so the numerator is one degree greater than the denominator in that case you will have a oblique asymptote and how do you find oblique asymptote you do long division yes you do long division don't don't shy away from doing long division it's not as bad as it's uh, as, as it is you just have to be patient you have to do like one methodical step at a time so you divide this and you divide this so let's do that so let's do the long division okay so 
Um, let me let me get some more room over here. So let's get a handy dandy eraser here. So we're going to talk about only the first scenario here, right? So I'm going to keep that space over here. All right, and then I am going to uh, uh, do some long division. My favorite thing in the whole wide world. Okay, so here's I'm going to do a long division. I'm going to write my stuff over here neatly, right? So I'm going to put x cubed. And then x squared. And there's a there's a term missing, right? I'm gonna write that term over here, okay? Look at this. This is I'm like just like so on top of things. Zero x. I'm not getting fooled by missing terms over here, right? Eh? So zero x minus four. So I'm gonna put all the terms. See the x squared, second degree, first degree term was missing, so I put it in there, okay? Now here's a whole bunch of term missing too, so we're gonna need them. Okay, let's just put them in. Why, why not? Let's just put them there. 0x plus 0. whole bunch of terms missing, right? So just put them there. Now, the thing about this is, is this is kind of like lazy long division. You don't have to go all the way. So, uh, so what do I have to do to this to make it look like that? Easy peasy. You have to multiply it by simply by x. So I have multiplied the uh, uh, x. Now you have to multiply x to all of these terms, see? like this so to make x squared look like uh, uh, x cubed um, I just have to you know I'm gonna make this a little interesting I'm gonna make this 3x like this okay just to make it kinda like more interesting okay so I'm gonna make so I'm gonna have to multiply by 3x to get to this okay um, so okay fine you do that so uh, so 3x multiply into every single term over here now so 3x, so this will be 3x squared, so, sorry, 3x cubed, this times this will be just 0, right? That's 0, t this term is uh, 0, x times x is zero, x squared, 0x zero squared, it's 3 times x, so that term is basically 0, but we'll just put it in there. And then and this is negative 12, the negative 12x, right? Okay, so, so we do this. And then we have to subtract. Look how beautifully I'm subtracting. Like I'm changing all the signs. Look how nice I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing this so that you guys make sure you do it like the nice way here. So this is gone. This is already gone. So this is plus 12x, right? All right. So what do I have to do? Well, I can't do anything anymore, right? So uh, because I can't multiply this is x squared I can't do this anymore. so you can like stuck over here so what you do over here is you stop okay that's all you gotta do that's all the long division you have to do and uh, because you can't do it anymore and and this whatever ends up being over here whatever ends up being over here that's the oblique asymptote over here so the oblique asymptote is y is equal to 3x plus zero if you want a y equals mx plus p there's a zero there so that is the oblique asymptote so let's graph this and let's see what happens 3x squared x squared minus 4 so I got this 3x squared did I get that okay divided by what did I write over here oh sorry 3x cubed I wanted 3x cubed Let's put it 3x cubed over here, and the denominator uh, has to be one degree less than that, right? Because you only have an oblique or slanted asymptote if the degree of the numerator is one one higher than the degree of the denominator. Okay, so here it is. This is the graph of the function. Uh, to graph this function, okay, to graph this function, first we would we would ordinarily do the same thing. We would have to find the vertical asymptotes, right? Vertical asymptotes is everything that makes the denominator zero. So the same thing, x squared minus four is equal to zero. So x squared is equal to four, and x is equal to plus or minus two. So those are the two vertical asymptotes here. So we have let's just we can draw them out. X is equal to two, and x is equal to negative two. So those are our two vertical asymptotes. You got those? Let's look at our beautiful vertical asymptotes over here. She doesn't mind looking at beautiful vertical asymptotes. You could deem, no, as you was looking at this, look how beautiful vertical asymptotes we got over here. All right, anyway, so those are the vertical asymptotes, all right? 
But what about uh, what was going on with this horizontal asymptote? So we discovered by long division, and it was not that long. It was like one, how long is that long division? It didn't last very long at all. But anyways, by doing long division, we got, we got this. And that's our oblique asymptotes. I'm going to graph this line for you, y equals 3x plus 0. And let's see what happens. So if I graph this line, y is equal to 3x. That's the what, b, y-intercept is 0, so it goes to the 0 right here, 0, 0. And slope is up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1. So let me, if you want to put that point in there, I could put that in there for you just to make, tell you to make sure it's there, see? And label this point over here, see? Uh, sorry, sorry, 1, 3 I meant to say. You didn't catch that, did you? Maybe you did. Uh, so I put that point there. So that's up 3 and over 1 up one two three over one so you can see that's that's uh, uh goes now this is the oblique asymptote now if i if i move out if i zoom out you can see the uh, the function the curve approaches this line but it will actually never reach it okay that's the oblique asymptote now if you have this function that's like in three parts so this function has three parts to it because it has two vertical asymptotes right so there is this right side is left side in the middle part the oblique asymptote business or or, or or horizontal asymptote business does not apply to the middle part of the function if there are three parts like this okay so it applies to the extremes of the function as x goes to positive infinity and as x goes to negative infinity so so the function will approach this line, this oblique line, but it will never reach it. The function will approach this line, but it will never reach it. Okay? So this is the case of oblique asymptotes. So and I'm going to summarize this before we finish. So when graphing polynomial when graphing rational functions, okay, the way you do rational functions is you first find the zeros of the zeros of the function. To, and that will give you the vertical asymptotes and then you f to find the horizontal asymptotes you compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator then there is no horizontal asymptotes and if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator then the horizontal asymptotes is simply the ratio of the leading coefficients like this and if the, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator so m is less than n then the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 0 or the x-axis. To this we have elaborated today that if you have that if you have a or this scenario where m is greater than n but m is one degree higher than the n if m is one degree higher than n, then you will have an oblique or slant asymptote and the way you figure that out is you do a long division and and over here the the what will appear what uh, what, what you'll get over here once you divide this thing will be mx plus b okay when you're done with this you just you you get this y equals mx plus b and that will be the oblique or slant asymptote inshallah i'll elaborate on this next time and we'll finish up this chapter until then